So as I present here with my presentation on conventional pap smear and the liquid based cytology as a screening modality for cervical cancer. We all know the pap smear and the cervical cytology based of the liquid based cytology are the two very important screen, screening modality for the cervical cancer. And we know it is in a cervical cancer which is highly preventable. Why it is highly preventable? Because we do have an effective screening technologies which very well fits into the screening criteria as given by the WHO and the way that it is, we know the etiology by the cervical cancer is caused like an HPV, so by vaccination you can prevent. You know it's in a long uh, precancerous lesion, almost 10 to 15 years, and the, all these precancerous lesions are very well treated by available diathermy, electrocauterization, and the cryocauterization. So if you attack in the precancerous lesion, you can definitely prevent the cervical cancer. And then the screening modality is very easily available, very cheap, cost effective, and then it is easily feasible to carry out in the mass screening programs also. So we do have a highly preventable cancer. The, we haven't created lots of awareness about the prevention of cervical cancer. Vaccination of the cervical cancer prevention with an HPV is started. Still, if you look at this bad figure of cervical cancer in India, WHO has estimated that India contributes to one third of the global burden of the incidence, death, and due to cervical cancer. So it's not only the new cases coming, it's the death also is highest almost in India. And nearly 90% of the deaths in 2018 occurred in the low and the middle income countries due to inadequate access to the cervical cancer prevention, screening and treatment program. So despite the availability of facility, we are not able to reach to the peripheral center to screen the precancer, screen for the precancers of the cancerous region and provide the treatment. And therefore, I think the new and new systems are coming where the mass screening program can be more implemented in the better way and the like manpower, the time, all things can be can, uh, like uh, reduced. And that's why there's one thing which is called the LBC. I'm going to talk about how the LBC can really help us in this mass screening program. Considering this high prevalence of cervical cancer in the country like India, in the global, not only India, but on the global basis, the global strategy for cervical cancer elimination was implemented as a triple intervention targets and with the, uh, with the <coughs> strategy that it should be implemented throughout the world by 2030. And this concept or the call for action was taken though in the May 2018. The WHO official launched this global strategy on 17th of November 2020. What are the three components which are there are the parts of the intervention, uh, this global strategy? The first, as we know the cervical cancer is vaccine preventable disease. So 90% of the girls should be fully vaccinated with the HPV vaccine by the age of 15. This is one target. Initially, we started with a three-dose schedule, then the two-dose schedule. Now, with the single-dose HPV vaccines are available with the high risk. And then if you achieve this strategy, then definitely will be able to contribute to the cervical cancer. Then 70% of the women should be screened with a high-performance test. By high performance test, we mean the high performance HPV DNA testing, which is now WHO is promoting as a screening test because they realize this HPV screening is definitely going to help to control and prevent the cervical cancer. And it is recommended at least two screening in the lifetime of women at 35 years and 45 years should be made for all women. But of course, an ideal screening recommendation I'll be coming in the next slides. Then 90% of the women were identified either with a precancerous lesion or the cancer should be provided with a treatment facility. It's not like that you are diagnosed and you're left over. Then you're not able to prevent the disease. So once you identify, you must treat. So the, recommend, the current recommendation for WHO as per the 2020 recommendation, how to screen for the cervical cancer, it recommends for the general population and the special situation. For the general population, the screen and treat and or screen, triage and treat policy has to be opted. The screen and treat policy, it recommends the HPV DNA high risk screening should be a primary screening test. And then it should be started at the age of 30 years. All women after 30 should be started with the screening. And every 5 to 10 years screening should be done. If it is an HIV positive and that the screening are more 
robust on that case screening triage and treat only we don't treat all patient of the hiv who come to be hpv positive then the more frequent screening and the starting at an early age is recommended and these to facilitate that the screening should be done either the provider initiated sampling method or even the self sampling method can be opted for collection of the samples now the question comes then why we are talking about the lbc it is very clear that implementing hiv dna testing is not possible in every place so who recommend where the hpv dna testing is not yet operational it should be a regular screening interval with a via that is a visual inspection with acetic acid or cytology as a primary screening test but it should be every 3 yearly should be conducted now why I, what i know about the screen and treat or screen triage and treat it depends upon what my primary screening method is there so it's in a big slide in which we are using a primary screening modality as in a cytology triaging should be done with a colposcopy to make a diagnosis it's an hcl it's an lcl or it is in a simple invasive or the micro invasive then you have to plan the treatment accordingly if the primary screen model is hpv dna in that case first triaging should be with the genotyping 16 or 18 or if the 16 18 negative had to do the via is triaging with the via or the colposcopy or the cytology and then you should follow the treatment protocol this is and now the systems are coming and the who enforces that if you are trying for an hpv dna testing you should rather go for the high risk genotyping screening that is a hybrid culture method so in the one go you can identify whether it is a high risk hpv or it is a low risk hpv if it is a high risk hpv you have to go for the next triaging and treat the patient and we do have in a good modalities like dithermy electrocautery and uh, the cryo ablation which can be cryo and thermal ablation can be done in the peripheral setting in a simple setup and then you can take care of as a mass treatment program also of course the electro cannot be done in the peripheral setting so now which method we are going to offer definitely the who always say give you the three four five options that it should be selected based upon the feasibility the training program the quality assurance and resources in the country of course 16 18 should be given but there is something different in the western world which was adopted as cog acp and the united nations task force they recommend early screening that is before the between the 21 to 29 years all women should be the screen by the cervical cytology every 3 years then between 30 to 65 years they, they leave with the three option with the cytology which with the hpd and alone or you do a co testing so of course we are doing the cytology every 3 year but when you are doing the co testing or the hpv it is every 5 year testing then after 65 years the screening is not recommended if the previous two reports are negative but if it is not done then you should do at least one screening after the age of 65 now why the western countries are still stressing on the cytology the reason for that the hpv dna being more sensitive but it is less specific as it does not tell you which pathology is there it is hpv is positive for high risk it doesn't mean that the person is having the some early pre cancerous lesions so always the hpv need to be triaged by some other test but when you have in a cytology it is less sensitive but it is more specific it tells you about which it is lc lesion it is an sc lesion or if you for the sin 1 sin 2 sin 3 so you can plan what treatment next and the cytology may or may not require the triaging so western world because there is a relatively low prevalence as compared to our country the high prevalence we need a more sensitive test rather than a more specific test for the screening modality and if the high prevalence they need a more specific test to avoid the high false positives they cannot tolerate the high, we cannot tolerate the high false negatives because as a screening tool because it's a high prevalence country so that is how we understand that now the who has realized and india also realized that we should go for the high hpv dna testing so when we talk about the cytology based screening test we do know the conventional the lbc and now the automated cytological screening system so what exactly we mean by pap smear we know the we all pathologists are sitting i'm not elaborating but what is important here to understand the papinicola was a person who started this in 1928 but as a cervical cytology 
प्रैक्टिस फॉर द डायग्नोसिस ऑफ प्री कैंसर डिजीज इन केम टू एग्जिस्ट आफ्टर टेन डेयर्स so it's a since 1938 onward it is being used as a screening test it is a very simple test initially he decide his classes of the reporting is there then the pathology system there so all i think in the subsequent lecture they'll be talked about how to interpret different pap smear slides but there was certain problem with the pap smear the it is most of the time it is a pers like uh, the person who collect the sample it depends upon that person how the sample is being collected how it has been smeared on the slide how it has been fixed whether immediately or there is some late fixation how it has been transported and then after how much of the time it has been further fixed and stain in the laboratory and they all are going to spoil your result if it is not done in a proper way and because of all these uh, they can the high false negative test with the pap smear and then when the person is transferring from the r spatula to the slide half of the slide may not be smeared so the 20% of the specimen is only transferred to the slide and because of that you get the more of the false negative result and first and next thing when your uh, slide is a stain then you need a number of the pathologists who are going to look into the slide then one opinion then second opinion like that is lots of men power is required and the inter observer variations are also there so it's required a lots of training for the manual understanding of this pap smears and later on it came as in the pap net where the slides are being and uh, the slide image has been analyzed by the computerized system and then in that way when the computerized system goes one by one by the multiple fields of the slides have been examined and then you have in a selected slide which is showing something abnormal on that case the manual observation of these slides can be avoided so the new system automators are definitely helping mass screening program i have taken 100 of the slide in the periphery and then it has been filtered by the computer system and then out of that maybe 30 like 30 slides needs to be examined by the experts and the second opinion can be obtained in this 30 slide and that with the manpower can be reduced this is one thing which you need to work on as an if you want to do an a community based screening system for this and the further the thick and thin smear which is in a problem in a uh, this site pap smear preparing by the person who is preparing or if the mucus is there if the blood is there then your slides are not good for the interpretation these things are for, then avoided by using the liquid based cytology system where the um, smear is collected i with uh, collected with the brush or the broom it is put into the media which is there in a container and then this cells are there in the container which are further processed this processing preparation is different for your uh, thin prep and the for the sure pack system and then we have more other um, systems which are not being fda approved so this gives you a thin film of a smears on the slide and then it does not make only one part of the slide to be revealed it gives you the multiple spots and each can be seen either through the automated computerized system or through the manually so that is how i think we do have in a manual system right now and in future we will be getting the computerized interpretation image interpretation system, system which will definitely help in the mass screening program so this preparation of slide in the thin prep or the super sure path is again an automated you don't have to take a slide centrifuge then take out the vial then you just pick up the slide cells then smear on the slide it is all automated just put on a computer system actually i was trying to take on a video but i could not insert so Mm, I will just go that slide later on. Before that, I just want to tell few things which is very important. It's going back or coming forward. I want to go back. i will be describing how the super sure path uh, path uh, sure path or the thin prep works before that i just want to look at this diagram this picture i think this is a very funny picture well you told us to draw what we see under the microscope he draws the table he is not drawing the microscopic slide pictures so that is how the interpretation can vary in this slide how you have been trained it's not a, uh, such a bad way but of course this is one thing second the technique There's a crouch. You may miss certain part which is actually bearing the cells. So 
So how the selection method is there? The role comes when I'm taking this light, whether I have taken the transformation zone on that or not. Then we are doing the endometrial aspiration cytology, whether I'm able to take the endometrial cells there from the representative area or not. Or you're doing the different aspiration cytology, whether the cells are received or not, then only the pathologist can report you. So it is a technique and the interpretation which matters a lot for a you know, good pathological result for anything. And of course the liquid based set to shoot. So it is very important how beautifully the sample is collected. So it is very, uh, I think I don't have the patho my PG friends, uh, students over here, but many of them joined the online. So I included this slide on that. It is very important. They should not be sexual intercourse for at least three days before the sample is collected. No vaginal douche, no medication, no lubrication, no powder, and the no digital pelvic examination should be done and the perform the right technique. By the right technique, we know the junction of this transformation zone, the smear should positively be taken you can this is I think the picture is not clear you should be able to identify the junction of the original squamous columnar junction and the new squamous columnar junction which is the transformation zone and the cells from here only are going to say, show the, you the abnormalities so this is very important then how to collect with an eye special of the long arm inside the short arm outside and you rotate by 180 degree only and rotate in one direction only. Don't clockwise, anti-clockwise. It will cause bleeding. And once bleeding is there, your smear is going to get spoiled. So then use an endocervical smear is taken with a brush. You take an endo brush, rotate it by uh, 180 degree. Don't rotate it anti-clock and clockwise direction. Then you put it in the smear. Don't go to spin. Otherwise, I have seen the rotate karte yata, rotate karte yata, ki zada smear aega. But once the bleeding starts, the whole RBCs are going to spoil your film. And in a simple papis, we don't have the washing facility for this artifacts. Then, smearing on the slide is again a trick. You should, if it is in a brush, you rotate with a clockwise direction. Don't, again, you just rotate it. And the whole smear should be on the slide. If it's an IS especially, you have a gentle pressure, apply from one side, then from the other side. So whole, there should not be missing of the cells on that. And once this, you can smear it as two separate slides for the endocervical and the ectocervical, or in the same slide, there can be two areas. One is for the ectocervical, one is for the endocervical. There are the people who suggest you can mix it up also. But I, I, we don't recommend that it should be one ectocervical, one endocervical, and we are following that policy. We are sending the two slides to the Department of Pathology. And then, once it has been done, before it dries up, you should put an pinsetium. So either the biofix is spray or put it in the coupling jar and then send it to the laboratory immediately because drying effect is going to spoil your cells and no interpretation can be done in a proper way. Then the liquid based cytology, it has revolutionized the thing then you're just putting the smear, this spatch brush or the broom which is collected into the smear, into the solution directly. So thin prep, we have the methanol based solution and the sure prep, we have an ethanol based solution. And the technique for collection is a little bit different in these two methods. In the thin prep smear, we collect with the spatula, um, we collect with the broom. And again, important when you collect it with the broom, this broom should be dipped on the, once it is collected in the same manner, it should be pressed, rotated first, Three to five times it should be rotated and ten times it should be pressed on the base of the vial. So the, all these cells which are there in the broom, it is sp uh, spilled over in the solution and then you sand it. But in the shore path, we have a, a different method in which we have a detachable brooms are there. So these detachable brooms can or the brush can be put into the vial and it goes to the laboratory and where the laboratory you have an automated system like in a chamber you can see in this chamber you have, have a slide holder then you have a this uh, container holder then you have to fix with the corks to this container holder and then it automatically goes from one place to other place for the three process to occur the dispersion the cell collection and the cell transfer into the slide and then you get the multiple uh, this imprints on the slide and this slide then goes back and the spray is there again. In, this fixation method is again there inside the this uh, automated system only and then you get the slide and this slide, if you have an image based management system, you can just interpret this slide. If this system is not there, of course, you need to analyze it manually. So with this, I think this is a system which is there, super pass. Then the quality of a smear is very different. In the convention, you can see the smear thin, thick, of the vertebral, then the sewer path, you have a 13 mm ethanol dots, and then 
seen film so the quality of the cytological pictures are very good now it comes when you are adopting a new technology is it better it's not better so that we our evidence talks about that so if you look at the comparison of thin prep and the sure path liquid based cytology in the subsequent human papilloma i dna testing then it is it concluded that the sure path sample elicited higher rates of satisfactory lbg slide and sufficient residual volume for further scv testing so this is one study says sure path is better it may be and then there may be thin prep may be better so there is no not exactly the randomized control trial available which is going to tell whether the thin prep is better or the sure path is better so basically we have to use and then again it depends in the method which i am more comfortable that becomes better for me in which i am trained that method becomes so the comparable results are there whether you using the thin prep or the sure path for the liquid based system and then of course this thin pep and sure pep are somewhere superior to the your conventional pap is here because the automatic processing is not available in your conventional the image tech facility cannot be applied and the ancillary testing samples are not available for your conventional pap is in method so this is the beautiful picture you can see if you are looking in the conventional pap is smear and if you are looking in the liquid based cytology smear so this is it is it makes easy not only for the pathologist it makes easy for us also to get a better result in this way then if you look in a meta analysis where the liquid based cytology and the conventional papillomas smear was compared they said it is more <coughs> as uh, they said the overall sample adequacy is definitely improved with the liquid based system sensitivity in screening is also found to be increased and it is more marked in the center of the low risk population as compared to the population which is high risk population so if you are having a low risk population because you can do the mass screening and then you can improve your result but if it's a high risk population you may not getting any much difference on that then these are the automated pap smear systems are available in auto set auto pap pap net by but over a period of 15 years n number of the image intensive image management systems are developed with the nucleus the cytoplas and their uh, the structural thing the staining properties are being analyzed either through the electrical media or through the um, this um, what you got the illumination system optical illumination system and then we have an artificial intelligence based interpretation of all these images and that is definitely is in a uh, you know most assuring thing is the ai based system will definitely help us to get the right reports but how far it is we have to still we have made the computers we have trained them how we have trained this computer to image this images that matters a lot how much n number of data you are going to give and then the auto the artificial neural network are going to analyze this data it will make its own algorithm and based on this algorithm whatever image you have taken it will compare with that it will give a report so you cannot totally be based upon this artificial intelligence whenever this reports are come of course the manual supplementation is definitely required so we should not blindly adopt all this uh, automated systems and all the men power will be there because the god has created man for his help now man is creating machine for their help so we have to realize ultimately it is the man in between who have to work hard to get the reports in the right way then just few things about the we are doing the cervical cytology at a lot but the cervical cytology interpretation is always being taken by you all i just want to say ki endometrial aspiration cytology i think this is one field which has been shown a great improvement initially when you are taking the endometrial aspiration cytology mucus and blood were obscuring the field when you are doing the simple pap smear by centrifuging the slide but now with the lbc system i feel and there is a study also it says with the liquid based cytology system the mucus and the blood can be separated and then you with the sure path you can definitely give a good result on endometrial aspiration cytology and this fellow who has studied he has found ki endometrial aspiration cytology was positive but the histopathology was negative then he tried to find out on the 4000 women why it happened then it was found the endometrium aspiration cytology collects the cells from all the walls of the uterus so likely you'd have getting the um, representative sample is more in aspiration cytology rather than your biopsy sample the biopsies can missed until unless it is not a directed biopsy but the aspiration cytology is less likely to miss and having the more 
sensitivity. So I think this is a new prospect which is go, we, we have to think for. And then last, again colposcopy is the future. We do have a colposcope, which is a like handheld colposcope, has a good digital technology, yet we have to verify the validate this, whether this can be a useful tool for the mass screening in the public places or not, but maybe it can show some future. So this is ongoing research to choose for cytology, pap smear, or the thin prep, or the short path, or this colposcopy as a screening methodology. I still prefer the liquid-based cytology. Thank you so much.